Hi and hello to all of you. So I'm here again to present the problem solving of fault calculations under the lesson of Power Systems 2 or Lesson 5. So before we uh, uh, go to the solution proper, so I want to thank all of the subscribers again and please take note if you want to uh, have the uh, copy of these problems, you can go to the description tab and download the link and practice the supplementary problems as well and one more thing um, you want to revisit if you want to know the principles you can revisit the uh, last slide or the uh, last lesson so that you can master the uh, principles first before understanding the solution proper okay let us have the first problem here so this is an interesting problem okay under Fault calculations. Okay, number one, problem number one. A three phase transmission line operates at 10 kV kilovolt and having a resistance of 1 ohm and a re reactance of 4 ohms is connected to the generating, generating bus bars through a 5 MBA step up transformer having a reactance of 5%. The bus bars are supplied by a 10 MBA alternator having a 10% reactance. Okay, for this, we need to calculate the short circuit KVA as well as the fault current fed to the symmetrical fault between phases if it occurs on the load end of the transmission line. Okay, this problem is under the three-phase fault or symmetrical fault. and it is a true power system now because it is already loaded now in order to solve this can revisit the lesson from the, the, the past lesson here which is the uh, uh, six point algorithm so you can use the six point algorithm here so the six point algorithm is divided into two, two, uh, six sections or so six parts so first we have letter a but Again, since the problem don't have any single line diagram, you must have an imaginative mind ah. to, to, uh, to foresee what is the type of system. So based on the problem that we read, this is the single line diagram, okay? That you have the 10 kV line with an impedance of 1 plus J4 ohms. You have your load. You have a step-up transformer. So you, if you... If you Still recall when you step say step up transformer, the primary and the secondary sides here, for example, the primary is the low voltage side and the secondary is the high voltage side. And then uh, this line is energized by this generator having a 10 NVA, 10% reactance. So if you uh, got the single line diagram correctly, uh, this is the, uh, the drawing. So we need this one for the analysis. So that is the first step. You need to have your single line diagram, which constitutes also the parameters of the system in terms of impedances and percentage reactances and as well as the apparent powers, which we need to convert uh, in the next few uh, uh, sections or steps. Okay, now the required is from the problem it is stated that if the fault occurs at the load end, so if this is your load, which is not stated in the problem, the fault point occurs at this um, section or region. So you have two regions here, by the way. So you have region 1 and region 2, respectively. Okay, like per unit analysis. Okay, so the required is the... Uh, Short circuit parameters, KB short circuit, and ISC, uh, three phase. Okay, let us have letter B. On letter B, if you can still recall the six point algorithms, uh, the second step is you need to know your favorite number or your S space because this S space is the forever, right? So, in this way, we need to recall the forever formula. Okay, from your per unit analysis that is lesson 5.2 right so since you have here only two regions of the system 
it's pretty clear if this is a linear system where a linear system means whatever your given system a given voltage is also equal to the base voltage now it's not mentioned the problem what is the primary and secondary side so we can assume that the v given here definitely on any region will be equal to the base voltage so that when we go to the forever formula v given and v base is simply equal to one so thus we can simplify things up and we can have this formula here which is very very important actually on symmetrical faults because you can use this if your system is in linear or it means i just coined the term that is linear it means they have the same per unit voltage when you have the fault point if this is the fault point your voltage per unit is one if this is the fault point at the high voltage side that is also equal to one because your v per unit or the operating voltage or the pre-fault voltage is simply equal to whatever the actual voltage is you divide it by the base which is simply equal to one per unit okay let us move forward so if you already have the forever formula if you can still recall the function of the forever formula is to convert any percentage reactances okay to its corresponding u base so we need to convert per unit quantities first we have here your generator you have 10 percent so by using this formula here you have 10 percent your favorite number our uh, uh, mva base is 10 given is 10 so therefore the answer is j.1 we will make we will use this as well on this gen uh, on this transformer you have five percent which is your old value okay by the way this is a xpu old i forgot to mention sorry for that this is the old value so our given value that is five and then you have your 10 here which is your base value and you have your 5 which is your given so just substitute and use this uh, simplified forever formula the answer is j.1 as well now as you if you uh, go back to the per unit uh, uh, per unit uh, analysis topic that in order you know, to uh, to uh, to convert this per unit you need to divide it by the z base right but again if we have this topic here we have sphere of destinies formula so this is the sphere of destiny number two which i can share with you that we can use this directly if you want to convert an ohmic value to its corresponding percentage value and please take note if you want to convert it to percent just multiply by 100 so there's no harm done here so it's not Hard. So, all you have to do is to have this formula here, which I coined a sphere of destiny number two. And I have three spheres of destiny on my uh, uh, misymmetrical fault calculation topic. That you have percentage impedance Z is equal to KVA times Z, which is the Z here is an ohmic value. And this is the KBA base, then it's the KB base on your uh, on your impedance of the line so kva z all over 10 kb squared now here it is flexible you can use this as x or even percentage r no problem i just generalize here impedance because you can use resistance reactance only but since they are they are on the same base you can augment it or integrate it as one here in this formula so it's pretty clear that you have your kba here so since you have a 10 mba the kba of that is 10,000 kva right just multiply it by 1,000 so for this you have 10,000 your impedance is 1 plus j4 in ohmic value please take note of that and 10 all over 10 squared or your kb this is the base or the value of the voltage of your transmission line. By the way, before anything else, this one must be total in order to uh, 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 to use this. And the voltage must be in line to line. Simply because it is pre-derived using those quantities no? or your uh, uh, 
uh, units. So, your KB here must be total ST or total apparent power. Your KB here must be line to line. So, in that case, just substitute all the values. The answer is for percentage ZL, we convert that ohmic value to its per uh, corresponding percent. You have 10 plus J40. Or in per unit, just divided by 100.1 plus J4, J.4. So that you have a consistent unit with your generator and transformer reactances. So, we will go to uh, uh, step C up to the conclusion of this pro of this problem so please stay tuned hi and hello to all of you so we will now finalizing the uh, uh, the first problem here so uh, the uh, problem number one using the six point algorithm so we are on the third step so the third step of this problem is you need to draw the reactance diagram of the system so how can you draw the reactance diagram of the system? It's like a per unit equivalent circuit. But the only difference is your sources is must be zero. So which means that if your source is a voltage source, you need to short it. And if that is a current source, you need to open it. The main reason why, simply because you need to get the Thevenin's reactance or Thevenin's impedance up to the full point and that's the process if you have an independent sources which is we are lucky on a power system that all of the sources are independent sources okay for this if if you can still recall we have a diagram here from our uh, from our uh, first slide that this is the diagram here and again you need to convert all of the per uh, the uh, the uh, reactances to per unit as we have uh, done on the first slide and then what you will do is to neutralize sources and let your VG here zero or shorted so we shorted your voltage here so that it has a value of zero and then we represent that voltage source by its corresponding reactance okay we use here uh, per unit values so xg.1 xt.1 and this is your transmission line from our uh, last slide and the fault point occurs here at the load end now this is your uh, reactance so actually not reactance but impedance simply because you have a resistive component of point 1 because of your transmission line so this is your reference neutral so i could say this is a Point A, point N. So it means uh, we need to calculate, calculate Z A N, which is equal to your Thevenin's reactance up to the full point. Okay, so that's the next step. We need to determine the Thevenin's impedance. And it's pre pretty clear that we need to add all of the uh, impedances here. So if you add 0 0.1 and then you have 0 0.1, 0 0.1, and 0 0.4, you have 0 0.6. So you need to convert it to its corresponding polar. And our main goal here is to get the magnitude. Because when we compute full currents, it's more, uh, uh, more on practical that we uh, establish the magnitude. But it's very important as well if you want to have the bar angles for analysis. But anyway, I use here only magnitudes. So get I base and IPU, and this is a pretty basic, pretty standard uh, equations. To get S I base in a three phase, S base all over square root of three of V base. Please take note, V base here is the fault voltage, whatever the voltage at the fault. We use 10K, that's the voltage there. So 10 M over square root of three, 10K, answer is 577.367 amperes. Okay, we need to get IPU. So from our uh, basic uh, uh, analysis or from our um, past few lessons on the fundamentals or basic concept, that IPU here is also your Norton's current. Which your Norton's current is VTH all over ZTH. 
But here, the pre-fault voltage, which is your BPU, is equal to 1. As we have mentioned, we have only one voltage there. So, dividing 10K over 10K is 1. And the value is ATH in terms of magnitude. So, divide it by uh, 1 over 0 0.6082. The answer is 1.64398. And it is in per unit value. And thus, the last step, which is number 6, or letter F, get the uh, the uh, short circuit calculations ISC three phase and KVA short circuit and we have this formula I base times IPU 577.367 times 1.64398 the answer is 949.17 amperes and if you want to get the uh, dead short circuit in KVA all you have to do is that 10 MVA must be in KVA we have 10,000 Times IPU, which is 1.64398, the answer is 16,439.89 or 16,440 to be exact. And it is already MATIC KBA short circuit. So based on this example, this is the fundamental of the fundamentals already of the symmetrical fault calculation. You can solve a smaller and bigger power system just having the six-point algorithm or the six steps, okay, in solving loaded power system with a symmetrical fault calculation. So let us solve problem number two.